Hello. Hi, is this Wayne? Yes, it is. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is the lead vocalist and bassist for the Little River Band. We're very excited to welcome Wayne Nelson to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, Wayne. Uh, thank you for um, thank you for your patience with my uh, bad memory. I appreciate you guys. That's okay. Uh, I just want to kn- I just want to know what are you making for dinner? Uh, salmon burgers and French fries. Oh, that sounds good. There you go. <laughs> I, I was telling the audience that with all the gold records you guys have, you can probably afford better than Hamburger Helper, and you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hamburger Helper. Uh, I, I, I quit eating meat in 1975, so no more hamburger helper. There and, you go. And see, that's why you, burgers were, were quite good. That's why you sound so good. We got a great connection. I appreciate people that actually have a good connection. It's a great day of cell phones. <laughs> my, my pleasure. My pleasure. So I got to find out. The first question, of course, it's on everybody's mind. And if you've done any interviews lately, I'm sure people's asking us. Uh, with all the craziness that's out there with, with the virus and everything that's going on, I know you guys are like the hardest working band in America. How has the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation affected Little River Band? Well, um, negatively, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say. Uh, we, uh, we lost, we, we were able to do three shows in March before all of those got canceled. That right. was, so that was five shows. We're, we're just finding out all of April is gone too. So wow. all told, we're probably at this point losing about 10 to 12 shows. Mm-hmm. Um, Three or four of them have rescheduled towards the end of the year. Found little gaps in our schedule that they could get back into the on, onto the calendar. Right. But um, uh, there's no you know there's no telling that that May's not going to disappear too. This thing is uh, you know just um, kind of a, a blowing up and escalating. And uh, we're we're just now starting to look at see we're we're remote because uh, three of the band members live in Nashville, mm-hmm. uh-huh. one lives in Dallas, and I live in Phoenix. So um, I'm not the guitar player. So m- me trying to do something from the house here would be uh, unacceptable, yeah. to be honest. Right. So we're trying to find a way to link the five of us up together where we could do something um, that was of a quality worthy of doing it and otherwise you know we're just going to do some some casual facebook live kind of stuff and and um say hi and sorry we can't be there but you know that kind of thing um it, it's unfortunate for a band because there are so many solo artists right. that are great artists that are doing this from home and they're self-contained if you will mm-hmm. um as a band especially the lead singer is a bass player that's that's pretty boring, folks. <laughs> <laughs> for, for for bass and lead vocals, there's not a whole lot of uh, not a not a whole lot of, of um, energy in that. So we're 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 trying to work on that and and hook ourselves up. But um, you know what? We just got to suck it up. It, it it's affecting everybody, and we're all literally the whole country is in the same boat yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for for in, in a very very strange way. So we just got to deal with it. And, and you know the thing too about the music industry, all your comrades in arms that, that gave us all the hits and everything, uh, they're really wanting to perform for the people, uh, even in lieu of knowing that a lot of times it's not going to be quality, you know, going over Skype or going over Facebook Live or whatever. But they want that. They want that connection with their fans so bad, you know. Yeah, and 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 so do we. Uh, if there are any listening tonight, I hope there are. Um, so do we. Um, yeah. the quality is something that we strive for, but in a situation like this, we would gladly settle for something that worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it, it's a it's a band. It's not an individual. It's not a person who's built their career on on one name or or, or one image. This is a band covering a whole lot of years, and we got to find a way to to do it to our satisfaction and, and to make people happy. And it's funny, um, it feels like forever, but we've only, so far in May, we've, uh, sorry, March, we've only lost two shows. Okay. Right. Um, on Friday the 13th, <laughs> I was getting ready to go to the airport. Oh, my. To go do a show in Wisconsin. Yeah. And with trepidation of, first of all, going to the airport, number one, but not knowing what was going to happen on the other end, because state by state, things were starting to yeah. unravel. Um and I got the call on that day. So 
that 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 show was canceled then of course then the the cancellation started to to um to roll in but it dawned on me today that was nine days ago yeah and it feels like forever ago yeah. because things are things are so chaotic and out of control but in that nine days we've been off for nine days we've been off for a couple of weeks at a time but it's starting to build up to exactly what you said we're used to working we're used to going there and that's what our bodies are used to going to do is two three four days a week we travel we we play music and we come home but the connection to people after the show we always go out and sign uh merchandise or tickets or Mm -hmm. set lists whatever people have you know we've signed cell phones we've signed babies (laughs) it's just insane (laughs) we've signed we've signed babies it's awful but uh that's what we miss that's what i'm really starting to miss um we've been playing i've been playing these songs for for 40 years i I know Uh, i was going to say that that not only do you want to be out there as performer but you've got a lot to celebrate 40 years with the band well exactly and and it's coming up and it's the band's 45th year um all those things are on, on such a great momentum and a great role but after the show when we meet people and boy is this gonna is this gonna play out when we finally get to go back and do it we get to hear their stories we get to hear what the music means to them uh and it takes us out of our bubble you know we got a bus and we got a guys and we got a crew and mm-hmm. we set up and we play and it's and, and that's that's our business it's our routine but when we hear these individual stories about how the music affected people when they were either when it was new or their kids now that that they're living their childhood because their parents had the the music in the house uh et cetera, et cetera. all these stories the military um proms and weddings and and passings of people where they're you know playing cool change at at the uh you know at at the 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 wake or the funeral all these stories just keep multiplying and and meaning so much to us and that's the huge withdrawal we're not getting that connection and and that feedback and and energy from people so we're really missing it when we finally get to go back to the first show after this is all blown over it's going to be quite uh, quite the celebration i promise let, let me ask you a crazy question and and you know you don't have to answer this if you don't want to but i'm looking at what's going on as, as the only good thing is coming out of it is people's getting together and, and people's appreciating each other i know there's been a, a a little bit of court entanglement with the band uh with with lawsuits and this and that and it was suggested that you guys all get back together and i had heard it almost happened or something but did do you think this might cause you guys to get more back together of some of the original members well all i can say is i haven't heard anything in that regard from any of those people yet okay um and i i i, I i'll just i don't want to get into the weeds of of the the, the you know bands splitting up and having arguments about the trademarks and the songs and so on and so mm-hmm. forth is as old as the Creedence Clearwater controversy, right. uh, you know, going all the way back to the 60s uh, and, and, and others probably. But this situation was created by the founding members in Australia who basically said to us, after having left the band over 30 years ago, and I'm serious. One, one, one of these, one of them left in 1983. I mean, that's a long time ago. Right. Yeah. right. Um, here's what happened. We kept going. E- every lineup kept going. One person dropped out. We replaced that person. Kept going. So this was a natural evolution of of energy to keep Little River Band alive and mm-hmm. and and touring and playing and making music, making new music having a career and our career now is our career the band's career is 45 years old but we were told in 19 sorry in 2001 thank you very much we'll take it from here hmm. just move aside <laughs> <laughs> and 
I, 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 I don't think it works that way because no. you guys right. left, you were paid to leave the trademark behind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all those legal things. By the way, Little River Band was set up as a company basically just to protect against this situation because we had seen all those breakups and all those split-ups. Right. And when Little River Band was formed, I, I, I shouldn't say we, I was not there at the very beginning, but when Little River Band was formed, it was formed in, w- with that in mind. If you leave, you're gone. Right. We'll keep going, and that's the way it was. And that's the way it happened. And then in 2001, after we did a new record, the founding members decided, hang on a minute, we're, we'll, we'll take the keys back now. Thank you very much. And we just went, that's not the case. And we won in court uh, multiple times. Uh, so, to an- I, I'm going the long way around, but to answer your question, the... The premise of us getting together is not on myself and Steve Housden, who who lived through that as well. Right. The premise of getting back together is you guys were going to kick us to the curb. So if you want to get back together, let's do that. But this has to be done with everybody's best interest in mind. Right. You don't get to call the shots because you were there on day one. Right. You left on day 1983 so this needs to have this needs to be a mutual agreement to all of us and a fair one because you did your part we've done our part we've made new music that people claim they like it every bit as much it's still in the show that th- this has to be a mutual agreement so I, I don't mean to I don't mean to elaborate but no we love elaboration no, okay. <laughs> if that's going to happen, it's got to come. It's got to come from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to say to us, "Hey, uh, sorry about that letter. What do we, What do you think? What What if we do something together?" So far, we've heard nothing of the sort, and uh, I don't. Knowing the way things have gone down now for the last almost twenty years, I don't hold out a lot of hope for that. But. Um, uh, they were great singers. They were great performers. They wrote great songs. There's no reason why it couldn't happen, but it has to have a fair. It has to be a fair playing ground for it to for it to happen. Well, right. Australians are tough, and I would think they would understand the phrase "suck it up," you know, <laughs> because that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, um, you know what? Uh, some of them might. There are people down there that ask kind of on a regular basis hey what about what about a reunion how about a yeah. how about a how about five shows in australia what that kind of thing again it, it can't happen without some kind of we got to meet in the middle of the road because all of the all of the vitriol and all of the junk has been thrown our way for right. surviving they are the chosen three um so this has to this has to find a uh, a spot. It has to find a balance. And there are some Australians who, to be quite frank, we don't go to Australia to tour because it's dangerous. There are people there who literally want our heads on a plate. Really? Wow. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. It's 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 very ugly. In when you dig way down deep inside of it, it's an ugly thing um, that is being aimed at us for doing nothing other than what they did for seven years while I was in the band until the last one of them left. And, and then all of a sudden, we're, we're the thieves, we're the right. pirates, when in fact they were doing exactly what the charter told them to do, keep going. Yeah. Right. And that's a shame too because people don't realize you know, it, it, we always talk about the, the the movie and music business and everybody just thinks about the creative part, but when you get down to it, the business side can quite honestly be ugly and sometimes take the joy out of it. Well, and very much so. And you you hit on a you hit on a big point. We th- right now the the way this thing has developed, this band is all about the joy because mm-hmm. people come to the show, they get their memories reignited. Um, th- the band is great. All five of us are singing. The band sounds great. It's good fun, and people leave happy. Um, and that's where the joy is. Like I said, meeting these people and talking to them and, 
and meeting their kids and then meeting their kids kids i mean it's 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 crazy good in in a very uh pro, uh progressed uh, uh, you know a developed way it, it mm-hmm. it's just morphed into that kind of a experience and then there's this dark side where we're supposed to kind of step back into this darkness of can it work will they do it, it you know how would it be structured this ugly part of the business that stuff's all in our rearview mirror we're just having fun we're playing the songs and you know i've been standing up there now for 40 years right. uh it's 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 great fun you hit on it there's no joy in what they're there they proposed and since then we haven't heard a thing from them and i doubt that we ever will but um quite frankly they didn't even like each other Mm. So this whole thing is based on they left because they weren't happy with each other, and how do you how do you go back and fix that in in in, in one big fell swoop? It's I don't think it would be real. It would not be joyful for me. That's for sure. Yeah. So well, uh, coming coming from Australia, uh, it, it's really evolved. It, it's not just an Australian band anymore. You've lived in California. You've lived in Illinois. So have I. Uh, I know you guys are in the Australian Hall of Fame. Do you think it would have helped ease things over if you got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Ohio? Um, maybe. Um, a very little known fact about Little River Band. I don't know if this is true of other bands. and I, I don't know if there's been another band that survived You know, all of the founding members. Mm-hmm. Uh, leaving, coming back, leaving, coming back, all this, all this up and down and change and whatever. I don't know if there's another one that really compares to that, but what I do know as a fact is Little River Band never had a number one song in America. As popular as our songs were and as many times as we hit the top ten, we never had a number one. And I don't know whether the Hall of Fame considers that because it's of Australian origin that it deserves to be in the American Hall of Fame. The American Music Hall of Fame has there's some incredible performers from either side of, of, of the water, but they carved a place that they deserve to be there and, and I and I mean that sincerely. Um, I don't know how they I don't know how they look at Little River Band mm-hmm. being a band from Australia who was influential and popular but never really cracked number one. You know what I mean? Never cracked. Yeah, that's an interesting double question. Platinum. Yeah. Never cracked. Yeah, it's it's it, so I got I got no idea, um, and w- what would happen if we did get inducted into the American Hall of Fame? Uh, you talk about a an interesting political <laughs> shit fight. I'm just gonna right. I'm just gonna say it as it is. It'll be a shit fight because I know that those guys have such rancor for us. Yeah. They would want to come over here and do it without us. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, we, 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 and we thought it was bad with the uh, Republicans and Democrats fighting this. Was, <laughs> I'd buy tickets for this. Oh. I mean, yeah. Well, this is worse. This is worse. I <laughs> well, let, let's talk about how you got involved uh, with Little River Band back in 1978. You moved out to California from the Midwest. And in the beginning, cool. uh, you were working with, and I had read, and tell me if this was wrong, that you were even roommates with uh, Kenny Loggins and Jim Messina for a while? Well, no, I don't know where, that, boy, boy, oh boy, the, the, uh, the, the story just keeps developing. I've never <laughs> roommates with, with either. Okay. Uh, here, here's the way it went. When I got, so, so Loggins and Messina had their heyday into the mid-70s, and then they split up. Kenny immediately came out with an album, uh, Celebrate Me Home, big success. Jimmy waited, and and they, you know, they were very, very much not together. Um, I came out to L.A. in 78. Um, a, a friend had gotten a job with a band, and the bass player had quit, and, you know, he recommended that that I would be a good guy to come and sing and play in the band. I came out to do that job. And it was supposed to last for seven weeks, and it lasted for seven days. And uh, but I had made the move, and so decided to stay. Um, and uh, through a series of events, I found out that Jim Messina was looking for a bass player, and I was a big fan. 
uh, I drove up to Santa Barbara. I met I met Jimmy. We hit it off, and he hired me. So I went to work for Messina in '78. Mm. Um, the two of the bands. It's interesting. The two bands became really good friends. Kenny's band and Jimmy's band became good buds. We were doing uh, a an interesting Tex-Mex kind of a thing w- way before Miami Sound Machine. Jimmy was playing, you know, his kind of Tex-Mex kind mm-hmm. of guitar feel thing with with his finger picking, and we had a Latin drummer. We were doing these real kind of complex grooves, and th- 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 Kenny's band respected us. We of course respected them because they're you know they were they're just great players and singers. So we had this little kumbaya going on between the bands but kenny and and jimmy weren't talking of course um we recorded jimmy's first record and the only touring we did in that two-year span was we we opened for little river band for two solid weeks they were doing their their um, live record and they wanted consistency every day they wanted to set up set up the recording have the same opening band for two weeks so that there was it was like clockwork every right. day the day unfolded the same way there was no but but jimmy was a legend to them so they would come and they would watch the messina set before they came out to do their set um and their bass player had quit uh close to a year before that they were using a session bass player who didn't sing and um so i was I had been at the right place at the right time to join Messina's band, and then that turned into um, a, a, another go around of being in the right place at the right time because Little River Band was looking. And so, at the end of that two weeks, the pressure was off for them. They came to me in the stairwell of the venue after we had gotten done with our last show with them, and said, uh, "You could be the guy to come and help with the vocals and play bass with us, and so on and so forth." So. We're taking some time off, but what do you think? And uh, I said no. Mm. Mm. Because the the Messina band was a band unto itself and was really good. And we were anxious to do our own music and Jim was going to produce us and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that whole scenario fell apart about a month later. So I called Australia and I said, uh, you know, you made the offer and all of this has fallen apart. I would be available next year. And they said, okay, we'll call you back. And I hung up going, they're never calling me back. <laughs> that, that, that is not, that is not going to happen, that they're going to call me back in April. And damn if they didn't call me back wow. um, at the end of March to say, here's the schedule. Um, Europe, America, Orient, record. Europe, America, Orient. Yeah. And, uh, you know, come on down. Well, it wasn't we'll long. Tickets. It wasn't long that once you got in with them, I mean, you really wound up working with greatness in the fact that you wound up being produced by George Martin, and you were chosen exactly. to do yeah, you were chosen to do the leads on on the Night Owls and take it easy on me. I mean, that had to be a big thing right. for you. It was huge um, because w- coming from Chicago, you know, we were doing six sets a night. You load your own gear. You load it out in the snow. You drive home. You 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 don't know where the next shows, you, where the next job's coming from. It was typical street street survival in Chicago. Um, the 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 job in L.A. didn't last but uh, a week. I was um, in, in L.A. before Messina, before the Messina thing came up. You know the little uh, advertisements in the front of shopping carts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're in those little plastic frames. Yeah. Right. And they got I my job with an ice pick in the parking lots of Los Angeles was to poke the side out of one of those frames (laughs) put the new ad in and if the frame was broken replace the frame pop it back on with I mean literally an ice pick a a bass player with an (laughs) ice pick you know (laughs) was what could go wrong there Um, so that that was the progression and so from from Messina to then doing arenas to open for Little River Band, and then Little River Band says, come and join us. Um, my my 30th birthday was in front of 125,000 people wow. in Germany wow. at Olympic Stadium. So that was uh, that was a, a, an, a, 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 an up curve of its own. Then 
it's time to make the new record, we're auditioning producers. And so coming to our shows are Arif Mardan and Tom Dowd and George Martin, and we're playing our set, and these guys are coming back to the green room and wooing us to sign with them or go with them or, or, or whatever. It was, it was just surreal. Then we got to go, so we all picked George because we were Beatles fans, and um, the, this is when the politics of what was going on started to show its head. The band did not get along, and there were two songwriters in the band who were not happy with the lead singer and the way he interpreted songs. He was also a hit songwriter as well, but there, was these, there were these factions now. There's, there were four different factions in the band from four different songwriters, and they were all coming to me as the new guy and the American guy <laughs> going, you know what, you should <clears throat> side with me because this is, these are the songs that are going to take us to the next level. And then the other guy would come and, these are the songs that are going to take us to the next level. Well, one of them, brought Night Owls to rehearsal when the lead singer wasn't there, knowing full well that this was his plan. Mm -hmm. There was a new person that was going <laughs> to sing lead on his songs. So when we got to Montserrat with George Martin, we walked in with this band junk uh, in the air. And George had to sift through the junk and just be the producer and go, look, guys, I'm picking these songs and the, the people singing them based on what I hear. I'm not going to deal with your politics. These are the people that are here. These are the people that I'm going to judge what the best record's going to be. Glenn sang Night Owls. I sang Night Owls. Glenn sang Take It Easy on Me. I sang Take It Easy on Me. But the writer of the song knew what he was doing and groomed me to sing those two songs. And then George... George picked them. He said, that's the way it's going to be. And, and uh, so there was another curve of suddenly now, um, I'm the new guy in the band. I'm not even really a band member yet. And I'm top five singing a lead vocal across America and Germany and Australia and whatever. Uh, it was just a, a crazy... It was like a roller coaster. I mean, it was it was that slow climb up and then... And then the big dip down, you know, with your arms in the air. It was it was crazy. Maybe that's what I, I heard because I heard also that some of the band, and I would assume it was the Australians, uh, kind of criticized George Martin and his abilities as well. I mean, it's Sir George Martin, really. <laughs> well, I, I I will have to say this: um, in all due respect to George, the politics and the drama burned him out. Yeah. So if you if you if you think about George Martin's career from Scylla Black to you know Ferry Cross the Mercy with um, whatever that band was the Beatles uh, he, he produced America he produced uh, um, uh, Cheap Trick and and McCartney and and Stevie Wonder we showed up with just a boatload of luggage and. Um, uh, 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 some of the I'm not going to name names some of the people in the band beat him up we ended up running the studio in a day shift and a night shift George wasn't ready for that George was in his late 70s he was there to produce what he knew about Little River Band as being reminiscing and lady and uh, cool change mm -hmm. and you know what I mean it was it was. I, I think he thought it was going to be a very gentlemanly uh, walk in the park and it wasn't. It was nothing but headache from day one. And like I say, George would spend the first two hours of his day okaying what was being done in the night shift because we had brought an engineer with us. So, again, the politics were one of the guys took one of the engineers and, and created the night shift. So George had to come in and approve as the producer what had been done the night before. So then it was lunchtime, then it was barely time for him to do any work that he wanted to do during the day before we got to dinner, and we talked about our Beatles questions. We burned George Martin out. I, I'm just going <laughs> to say that in all fairness, okay? By the time he got back to England to do the mix and a couple of orchestral arrangements with, with, with players and whatever, um, he sent us the final, and I have to say, with 
the utmost of respect for everything he did in his career he 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 was burned out he was done yeah. and capital agreed we agreed and we went back into the studio to remix six songs um for anybody to criticize him is short-sighted and uh petty because the reason that they came back that way is because he had stopped giving a damn right. about the project um he said what he said he tried to make his claim and then we continued to burn him out we went two weeks longer than we should have in his studio blah 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 blah. so i i don't fault him a bit but um the the what we quote unquote redid or repaired um came out with more energy would they have been hits with george's mixes it's very possible they would have but they did come out more energetic than than what he delivered well i know you guys i i I, go ahead i was disappointed myself but uh, that there's a reason for it and i'll never fault him for for what happened well he he had controversy he had to deal with with the beatles too i mean if anything you know with with wives or whatever i don't imagine he expected any more of that it probably was a surprise to him you know well probably not but i'm gonna just compare the dollars that george was making in order to keep the beatles together (laughs) and all that when all that was going on it's a lot easier to drive to work when you know when there's five million in your bank account than when you're making 50 grand with little river band that's for sure there there is a perspective here uh, of of where you are on the bell curve when when controversy happens we 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 dished out more than he deserved or needed and and he wasn't being paid nearly enough to 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 put up with all that crap so well um, you received high praise indeed from somebody else that i consider a legend no slouch on, on his own account and that's the great glenn fry talk about your relationship you got your stories with glenn i do um uh it's um it's really interesting it's a very interesting time um so if you run the politics now the lead singer has been basically stabbed in the back and fired um we did two or three records with john farnham who was an amazing singer we had an amazing band but Capitol records was not interested um then of all people irving azoff decides he's going to sign little river band if we get glenn shorick back as the lead singer and we said well that's a no-brainer if glenn wants to come back we'll do that and so then glenn fry we're, we're part of the same stable if you will because irving and glenn of course go go way back so there was this little momentum going on and glenn fry comes down to australia to tour with us for two weeks we become his band we blend eagles with little river band and we're going to do expo 88 in brisbane to the tune of 130 140,000 people and it's going to be live tv so big big buzz going a on. big deal yeah and a big deal and glenn shows up with his keyboard player and glenn gets dropped into the middle of the politics yeah. mm-hmm. and the little river band soup um so the keyboard player is kind of he, he's you know he, he he doesn't really have any say or any clout he's just there to do his job but glenn is now turning and looking to me and we, we will take a break a tea break which drove him crazy like it drove me crazy <laughs> and glenn would come over to me this is this is glenn fry and and he's the eagles and we're all mutually blown away by each other it's we're having a great time but he comes to me and says how the hell do you stand this <laughs> <laughs> they take they, they, they take more breaks than they work and i went look it's 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 australia and it's australians and that's that's their that's their frame of mind and you just you just slam in as much as you can while everybody's in the room and 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 try to make it work and whatever and that was kind of the the development and the build-up of our rapport um, two Americans who are used to you go in at nine you're ready to work mm-hmm. you don't take tea break blah 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 you, you, you let's get this done what the hell and it 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 made him crazy but we we slowly but surely put together um, a compatible set 
and we got to the live TV thing and we did it. And Glenn walks up to the microphone and says, it has been a blast to be here for two weeks with the best singing band in the world. Mm. Can't get a better recommendation than that. Wow. Well, and you, none, none you've, whatsoever. You've had quite a history of having, uh, you know, other other musicians and other celebrities uh, give you guys accolades. Because I guess even Chris Christopherson visited one of your concerts and had very high praise for you guys, right? Yeah, and and that is a full circle thing. Uh, let, let me let me finish the Glenn thing because yes, there's a real cool story yes. at right. the end. So we do, we do the expo, then we've got one more show, and we've got a show in Melbourne. And at the end of the night, we had been doing. Um, uh, Desperado uh, blended into Cool Change. Showstopper, it was fabulous. To sing Desperado with him was just amazing. And um, we're done. The whole thing is done, and the pressure's off. And he comes to me, because we had walked off stage, and he comes to me and he says, let's go out there without the band and do it. Oh. Yeah. And he said, can, can we do this? Um, and I said, you and I can do this, whether the band will do this, I don't know, but you're Glenn Fry. let's do it. Yeah. Let's put it out there. And he turned around and he said, we're singing Desperado a cappella. Wow. And, and, and the, the, the members of Little River Band were, I'll just say this, they were taken aback. <laughs> they were a little freaked out <laughs> because nothing, nothing happened in Little River Band without a whole lot of rehearsal and a whole lot of tea breaks. Yeah. So <laughs> out we go. And I, 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 you, you, the, the video is on YouTube. You can see the video of the three of us doing it. And I'm still holding my wine glass, which I didn't even realize <laughs> until years later. But we go out, and I said, yes, let's go. Because we can sing, for God's sakes. Yeah. Just, let's go do it. And uh, we walked out, and... He got the opening note, and he sang. We sang Desperado a cappella, wow. um, and it was one of the magical highlights of my career to stand there and do that with him. It, in in retrospect to his passing, yeah. uh, a cherished, an absolutely cherished moment um, that worked, and everybody in the band was like, "Wow, you what? You know, who who thought of that?" <laughs> <laughs> he did, but but. Why didn't we? We, we? we could have done that, too. I mean, we should be doing that a lot, and we don't. Um, so um, fast forward to 2016, I think, or 17, I'm not sure. We were doing a theater run uh, along the coast of California. The last theater was at Pepperdine in Malibu. And at the end of the show, I take pictures of the audience. And I put it on our Facebook page. Yeah, I've so seen those. The audience, there's a lot of pictures. Yeah. Oh, there, there, there's tons of them. And yes. the, the bigger the crowds, the more there has to be. But people just love seeing themselves reacting and being there. And yeah. wow, the band took the picture of us. And put it on <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm done. And I get done. And I, we go downstairs. And we're in the dressing room. And we go, did you guys see the guy like 10th row, 12th row? He was a dead ringer for Christopherson. <laughs> oh and they went, dude, that was Christopherson. Oh. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Chris Christopherson was watching our show, and then the knock comes on the door mm. of, the, of the green room. And there's Chris and his wife, and they come in. And Chris is, I, I, I'm, I'm not making this up. You can ask anybody in the room. Chris was uh just pouring on the prey. He was he was blubbering of how good the band sounded and he's and he just this just this came out of his mouth. He says, The vocals. The vocals were better than the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What do you say to Chris Christopherson wow. when he compares you to that we you, you it, we were frozen in time. It was like uh uh okay <laughs> um, I don't know when where you saw the Beatles, but that's one hell of a comment. Thank you very much, and you just got to roll with it and go, thank you. Uh, it's a spontaneous moment, and then we talked about, do you need a backing band? It was great fun, but um, you're absolutely right. To get that kind of endorsement from two giants in the business uh, is, uh, is, is amazing. Right. It's just um, you, you you can't put into words what it means to to 
catch the ear of somebody that you respect that highly. It, right. it means meant the world to us. Well, sure. I, I know there's respect between fellow performers. I had read in my notes here, and maybe it was Desperado. I'm not sure of the song, okay? Wasn't there a song Little River Band was going to put out, but you guys found out Linda Ronstad put it out, so you didn't put out yours? I mean, what was which song was that? Yeah, When Will I Be Loved. Okay. Um, and uh, that was going to be the band's very first single was a cover of When Will I Be Loved. And uh, Ron Statt beat him to it. And and you know what? And it's a damn good thing, because I would be willing to bet that had Little River Band put their first foot forward with When Will I Be Loved, could have been a very different result. As it turns out, they put their first foot forward with an original song that became a, a, a pretty solid hit and establish them in Australia without that kind of, you know, uh, without that kind of uh, history in Australia. They, there may have been a very, very different outcome, but they had a couple of, two or three big hits in Australia before the manager decided to go to L.A. and, and shop them. Uh, so When Will I Be Loved could have, been, could, have, could have been a disaster for the band. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I, I mean, something like that is, is like a voluntary thing. I mean, is, would there ever be a situation where you would say, to hell with it, we're putting it out too, or can you legally do that? I mean, do you all have to do something different? Or? Oh, you, you, can, you, can legally, you can legally cover mm -hmm. anything as many times as it, as it wants to be covered. There's no, there's no legality against it, but uh, the, 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 the logic of it in the music business is you sound like you're on somebody else's coattails. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, well, you're going to do it with two-part <coughs> harmony. Big deal. See ya. Because um, right. Ronstadt killed it. I mean, what, how do you answer Ron, Ronstadt's version of When Will I Be Loved? You, you, it, would be, it would be really, really not a smart thing to do. So um, kudos to whoever decided to pull it back and, and, and do something different. But um, that, was their, that was the band's beginning uh, in 75. And you had to be nice to Linda. She was a friend of Glenn Fry, so you know. <laughs> well, they were in the same band, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. That's what I knew. <laughs> the Eagles, essentially. Yeah, we worked with Linda, and Linda was um, Linda. There were there were there were pretty solid uh, red lines drawn between where we were supposed to be and where where Miss Ronstadt was supposed to be, and in a good way, right. you know. Right. Uh, some people need that space and that privacy and whatever, but um, uh, we didn't. We didn't get to hang. We got to shake hands and say nice set and then move on. But um, she was amazing. That was in wow, uh, ninety five, I think. Right. Amazing, and and to know that what happened to her that she cannot sing now, and it's so sad. I mean, how do you give that up? How would how would that affect you? You know, think about it. Um, I, you know what? I don't know. Uh, it. I have thought about that because um, her voice was so powerful, yeah. and Parkinson's has taken away that power. Um, did you see the Kennedy Center honors when people yes. came out and sang her songs? Yes. It was it was that was magic. They were they were great, um, and I've actually had to reflect on that because I'm approaching the big seven zero. Um, luckily, knock on wood, I, I, you know everything's still working. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it works as long as Tony Bennett's does. Mm -hmm. I got the chance to see Tony uh, in Vegas a few years ago, fourth row. And I was amazing. just mesmerized by the power and the, the he, he doesn't he he just he just looks up into the lights and sings. He's done with you know hoopla and show business and jokes and da da da. He just I'm here to sing, and I was so envious. It was so inspirational. Um, I hope to, I hope to get there. But you know, there's everything from Parkinson's to coronavirus. Who yeah. Yeah. there? There is no guarantee. Yeah. And uh, I, that that I th here here's how it affects me. To, to answer your question, it kind of just floated to the top. Every night is the last night. Yeah. Every time through the song is the last time through the song. I've played reminiscing three or four, three thousand times between rehearsals and shows and whatever there's no i wouldn't go sit down to play reminiscing on my own as an inspirational piece unless it was meaning something to the people that were hearing it um 
and and they and they react and that's where the energy comes from but every time that happens i just treat it like it's the last time it's going to happen you know, I there, don't know. There, there, there's so many performers that object to playing the hits even ricky nelson had the thing with garden party they all, all want to hear hello mary lou and he was irritated by that they booed him off the stage because yeah. he was singing new stuff how do you feel about that do you feel you should do those hits well especially since you guys yeah. have released new stuff uh, I feel totally the opposite. Um, number one, the hits are, are what people's memories are attached to. The people wouldn't be there if it weren't for the music, and it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. I feel totally and completely opposite to that whole um, attitude. With all due respect to Ricky Nelson, I was a huge fan. I'm old enough to be a fan of Ricky Nelson's. Um, uh, we've worked with other performers, and I'm not going to name names, mm -hmm. but we actually did a long stint with a couple of performers in Australia. And at one point, one night, the guy came back to the green room, and he was so sour, we literally, like, had it out with him. Why are you even in this business? Yeah. You don't like doing this. For, for These people came to hear your hits. Why do you hate hit, singing your hits? He said, ah, oh, it's just, it's so degrading. It's That's demoralizing. Wow. And we're like, okay, well, then you're not finding in the hit what it meant to somebody else because you're out of gas I internally. Um, and maybe you should quit, Yeah. just being frank. Maybe you should quit because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is delivering emotion to the people that are there in the crowd. If you've got a sour attitude about a hit song, then... You're in you're in trouble. Yeah. Right. I, I feel totally the opposite. <clears throat> um, and and but but along with that, I do feel that it's musicians' responsibility to keep making music, keep the plumbing clean, keep writing, keep being creative, and keep taking that creativity into your hits. Right. Because Little River Band's hits, the way I describe it, because we started to there. Look, I stopped touring with the band because we were doing the same 11 songs the same way and there was no discussion about new material we were done being creative we were just robots and i said i did life's too short and i had personal reasons as well for 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 wanting to leave the road um i came back in 99 because people wanted to do new music and i think that's our responsibility whether it's a hit or not it's our responsibility to make music and keep trying to be creative and those creative moments have spilled over into the hits. And the way I describe it now is the cake is the same, but the icing is different. Right. There's different solos. There's different little pieces where we can be spontaneous. And spontaneity happens on stage every night. We turn and jerk our heads back to look at the drummer who did something different. That's creativity. We may be playing the same song and singing the same lyrics, but we're being creative as we do it. And I think people appreciate that spark to where they think, that, not think, they feel that the band is there to do what the band's supposed to do. And I, I'm off on a very intangible <laughs> spiritual plane there, yeah. but the new songs and the new music that we make helps the hits. And right. when we put those new songs on stage, people are standing, we're getting a standing ovation for one of our new songs. It's five years old now, but there are tons of people coming to the show that have never seen a Little River Band show right. and they're hearing new music it feels new to them it well, feels energetic well new songs become meaningful to, to people later on as they hear it more I mean you know it all has to come from somewhere like for instance I'm convinced uh, Lonely Losers about me so you know Every everything means something to to everybody. It is. Yeah. It is. It's 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 for every high school male since uh, 1978. <laughs> well, let me ask you uh, how you feel as far as what kind of how you would describe Little River Band's music because I know that people like to you know categorize and label everything and now there's this new label that everybody's come up with where they call music Yacht Rock. Well, well, and I've heard a lot of people right. say that little LRB is Yacht Rock. Do you agree with that? And how would you classify well, Little River Well, for Band? instance, we, we've got a friend that's on another station who contributes to here, and he was interviewing one of the singers from the association. And he gets really mad if you call it Sunshine Pop. But Sunshine <laughs> Pop comes up everywhere. Thing, right? so, so is there any crazy labels they put on uh, LRB? Well, Yacht Rock is one of them. Um, 
Tiffany's right. Um, and, and now, but I, I have to say, okay, w- so we met the guys that started Yacht Rock. It's an Atlanta band. They've actually done their own record now called something with the word yacht in it. Um, I don't know what it was. But anyway, they're really great musicians. They're great singers. They were just, you know, they were just playing the music that had influenced them, and they became successful at it. So we went and did a show with them. They opened and we closed. And the parking lot was full of 25-year-old millennial, successful wonderful happy people <laughs> there you it go it was and it was an amazing thing because we've been playing well we the last time we played for a parking lot full of those people would have been you know 1980 something yeah um and 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 everybody has grown on since then and and we love our audience but this was a very uh, uh amazing adventure because we're playing those songs for people who did not hear them when they were new this was all passed on it was all uh you know, generational and 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 hand me down from parents or grandparents or whatever, and they were they were insane. They were they had so much fun, um, and if you can imagine, about two thousand people with hand fans, you know, paper <laughs> fans, <laughs> with wait a minute, with John Oates picture on oh. the front of the fan, oh my and that periodically everybody would just put the fan up, and so we're looking at this sea of. John Oates face. It was <laughs> hilarious and and cool and 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 like it was the the front edge of that whole um, wave. Are we happy about that? Absolutely, because they can call it whatever they want to. What they're reacting to is the music. Um, if the association doesn't like a new label that is putting their music out there so that they can go back out and perform it as Sunshine Pop, uh-huh. sorry, but I, I just have to say get over it guys (laughs) because you're never coming back as the association and being on the cutting edge you're not we are not on the cutting edge of what's happening in the music Billie Eilish is on the cutting edge of what's going on in people's bedrooms with music um, and on and on and on we're not there but we have a platform where people are appreciating the music and what the, the, the actual musical word I would use to describe it is it's harmonic Um, we find power in voices with a powerful blend and of all the things that can be synthesized from bass to drums to keyboards to guitars to to orchestras to whatever you can't recreate human voices singing together it sounds fake no matter what what they do because computers can't move that fast they just can't do it um and when you put five people together who are physically making that noise it's a magical thing so that's that's on the the top of the little river band description but then underneath that is a layer of three-part guitars yeah and then the keyboards and then i'm a melodic bass player i don't just play you know just one note i like to play the full range of the bass guitar there's a lot of stuff going on in little river band's music and it's all melodic and that that's the thing that people aren't hearing from programmed music now they're hearing machines play grooves and the grooves are cool we love the grooves there's no question but what goes on top of those grooves is not the same as what was happening in the 70s when everybody was exploring singing yeah. Like the Eagles and the Hollies and the Doobies and the Four Seasons and and the Beatles in 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 the late '60s and so on and so forth. Um, that is a magic that cannot be produced, and you can take people out of it. This is the thing that really irks me about all of the critics of you're not the same three guys that sang those songs. No, we're not. But are you going to argue with Crosby, Stills and Nash bl- blend? <laughs> yeah, no. Are you gonna argue? Are you gonna argue with the Doobie Brothers blend? You're gonna argue with the Four Seasons? You're gonna argue with the Hollies, Beach Boys? Blends happen when you find the right people to augment that blend, and that's what we've continued to do. Every time somebody leaves, we look for somebody else that makes the blend work. Um, and it's no easy task when, when you're not related, because like if you were no. the Cowsills, <laughs> you know, in your family, <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> now there's the name. <laughs> that would be sunshine pop as well. Right? Yeah, yes. Definitely. Yeah. The cow sills, 
um, the uh, it, Sly and the Family Stone, yeah. uh, and the other great family group from Australia was the Bee Gees. Yes, yeah. And, and Killer. You, and, 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 and you know and that so, helped me but, educate but me. Because you mentioned the Bee Gees, I was just questioning whether they were from Wales or from Australia. Because we were talking about the uh, Australian Hall of Fame, and I could only think of maybe three or four people would be in there: Rick Springfield, Olivia Newton-John, uh, you guys, and, and <laughs> maybe now the Bee Gees. Uh, th- well, the Bee- if the Bee Gees aren't in it, they should be. That's um, for there's sure. a hell of a lot of bands from down yeah. there. Um, having gotten immersed in their music scene, uh, it was amazing to go to another part of the world and hear. A completely different set of bands for years at a time. Um, they were you were hearing, you know, English bands and 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 all of the the, the people who were charting. But there was a there was a culture of America of of, of Australian bands, including by the way ACDC. That's and right. Two, That's um, right. Uh, In excess, uh, Men at Work, um, the Angels, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Easy Beats. A lot of great music from Australia, and it just took a long time for it to get. Uh, across the pond, but um, the pond, but Soundgarden was from Australia. Some great music created down there. Well, I'm glad um, you got a few members but, in your group now that's a little bit more used to Starbucks and McDonald's and 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 everything that we have here. Uh, may, maybe you know life might be a little easier for you rather than talking about all the people that you've had in your band because there's so many. Who is in the uh, current LRB now? And, <laughs> and, and and maybe you can say a little bit about it. It would be shorter. You're right. There have been there there have been thirteen actual business band members, but there have been thirty eight people on stage with us. It's been quite a wow. been quite a merry go round, a revolving door of of people that I've I've worked with. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm better for all of it, but um, uh, I just want to I just want to say that that um, that whole blend thing, like you say, uh, has been my focus once I sang with those guys and knew what it was like to walk to a microphone with them, I knew if it was there or if it wasn't in the room with the people that came along after that. And um, it, it's in the room now. It's 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 a great thing, and we're having a great time. And, there, of course, there's yourself. And there, there's Chris Marion and Rich Herring, if I pronounce this right, and Ryan Ricks and Colin Winery. Am I pronouncing this right? Uh, his name's Winery. Winery, um, okay. All of whom have worked. All interesting. Less all of whom have worked with other vocal bands in Nashville, um, and all came to the band with a similar uh, outlook, but with very very similar backgrounds to all of us of what we had cut our teeth on, which was Motown and R and B and really good country vocals, uh, four and five part. Which was a separation from Little River Band was an assembled band, mm-hmm. and they 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 didn't come from that same uh, wide variety of 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 musical genres. So that's why the sponta- spontaneity is so good in the band. We when somebody does something, everybody else can jump on it because we've all been in that zone before, mm-hmm. and it's really it's really a lot of fun to do it, and. Um, and keep it going. So, like I say, it, it, it irks me that people think that there's only one way that the that there's only one blend that can deliver the songs. That's just not that's just not true. Right. Well, Wayne, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us, and more importantly, thank you for keeping it going for the last over well soon to be over four decades. Um, so well, that thank we you very much. I, I appreciate it. that. Absolutely. Uh, for um, our- where do I? question where yeah. do i find this interview i, I would de- dearly love to hear it back and and uh or is this just live and, and it's gone now no uh when we when we do our show live we actually record it uh so after the show i will be able to get you a copy of the interview and a copy of the show as well um i can email oh, you a link um or if you if, if that doesn't work for you let me know we can figure something else out and you can put it on your no, website no, no, too if good. you want so yeah, the link yeah. will be great, and I would put it on the website because you guys were great. You were you were great to talk to this. This, I'm doubting that this took 20 minutes. Where what are we at now? <laughs> we're we're at an hour. <laughs> in an hour, there yeah, you go. Yeah, See? I, I, I'm I'm a gas bag. I know how to talk. No, it sure. was great. I, I was thought great. you were a great guest, and I really appreciate people like you because, like I told everybody at the beginning of the show, in this whole crisis is going on an epidemic and virus and everything the one thing that we all have that unites everybody is, is music that's music right. such as lrb that's right that is that is that is the truth um and um 
this it 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 it's it's painful to sit still for for what's probably going to be about seven or eight weeks but um can't wait to get back out there yeah. absolutely well we encourage our listeners to check out their website at real little river and uh wayne we will be in touch after the show thank you so much we've had a lot of fun it's my pleasure thank you it's been a, been a great time all right have, Appreciate a, it. have a great rest of your night all right take care all yeah right. be safe you guys yes you, you too. too all right bye-bye thank you bye-bye